Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and Blender 4 is here. At least it should be tomorrow, assuming all things going according to plan. I'm cheating a little bit, showing you the release candidate, but what we're going to show you is some of the coolest new features in Blender 4. First off, you're going to notice they switched to a new font. I actually find I like this font. It's a change I like. I know it's going to be polarizing. Some people will like it. Some people will not. But let's show you some of the neat new functionality in place. I got my default cube here. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate it and move one over here. Now, one of the neat new things, and this is actually my favorite new feature, although it may be seeming kind of small, is let's hit the G key. So I'm in move mode like so. And sometimes I want to handle various different snapping points. Well, now what you can do while moving something is you can hit B. And now you can actually pick where to snap via. So I'm going to snap via that edge, for example. And then I'm going to do edge snapping. At any time, I can hit B again. I can then just go pick that vertex over there, and you can actually tell it how to do the snapping. That's going to be a massive time saver. At the same time, anytime you're in a typical editing mode, so if I'm in, say, scale mode like this, and you want to move in the scene, you can now hold down Alt and navigate while manipulating. It's a very nice new feature. Unfortunately, it does have a weird commit when you're done, but that is going to be a definite game changer. So I love both those new features. By the way, on the topic of snapping, you're going to find the snapping has been just kind of refined and cleaned up in general over here. But once again, when you're in any kind of a tool such as G for moving things around, just hit B. And now you can select where you want to snap relative to, like so, and then it'll immediately start snapping using that point. Going to be a huge time saver. And once again, you can hit Alt, and then you can do all your standard manipulations so we can pan and move and so on. There is, again, a weird kind of committing bug. Hopefully that gets fixed in time. Or maybe it's user error and I'm doing something wrong. But two really simple new features that are going to change workflows massively. Next up, we have a feature people have been asking for a very long time, something called light linking. Now, this is cycles only, so let's go ahead. We'll switch over to the cycles renderer like so, and we'll grab our cube. Let's move it up a little bit. We'll duplicate it so we've got two of them in the scene. And once again, move that guy up a little bit, and we will add a surface for us to reflect off. So we're going to go grid, go to my grid over here, and let's just jack the size up like so and uh, move that down a little bit. All right, so here we go. We'll move over to cycles mode, and I just basically want you to see the lighting effect in this world. So now what you can do is actually grab a light, like this guy right here in the world, and you can go down to the objects property here, like right there, object properties, go to shading, and now you can do light linking. Create a new light linking group like so, and now you basically pick the things that you wish to be in that group. So now you're seeing the only thing being lit by this um, light now is this cube in the group. So we can basically add our other cube in, and you can see now it is going to interact. And then finally, we can add our grid back in, and now it will interact. You can toggle things off and on. So if we want to have one that thing isn't lit by the lighting in the scene, uh, you can do it that way. By the way, indirect lighting or bounce lighting will still uh, show up. So this is only going to be for uh, first bounce lighting. But as you can see, if you want to have lights interact selectively in your scene, light linking is going to give you the ability to do that. I know people have been requesting this for a very long time. Uh, unfortunately, it is only uh, available in cycles in uh, EV. It, it's, uh, it's simply not a thing. So uh, that's the unfortunate part here. This is a cycles only feature. But again, I know people have been asking for that a long time. It gives you a lot more precise control over your lighting. Also probably makes it a lot faster workflow for like experimenting your lighting, setting things up and so on. Next up, we have what is probably the most exciting new feature. Now, I like the movement stuff we looked at earlier probably the most, but this one is the sexiest new feature, I think. This is Geometry Node Tools. I actually did a full video specifically on this. Uh, basically, we've taken Geometry Nodes and turned it so that anyone can use them to make editors or modifiers. So let's go ahead and show you how you can do this. So we're going to go here and go Geometry Node Tools. Instead of a modifier now, you've got the tool mode. And what I'm going to do is create a new one. And this is a tool that's going to run immediately on our geometry. So let's call this one My Tool, like so. And here you can see you've got pretty simple. you got a group input and a group output. Now we can do something in the middle here, like uh, let's do Shift A. And then we're going to search for Extrude. So we're just going to do a quick mesh extrusion. So now that we've got this created, I'll go here into edit mode. So these are all edit mode tools. You'll see over here, I have this. I can say my tool, like so, and then boom, it immediately runs. That is pretty freaking cool. So what I can do now, let's undo that one, and let's uh, add some new functionality to this. We've got a new uh, option here. So we've got this new, again, Shift A, and we've got this new guy in called Repeat. So we're going to add a repeat zone in, like so. Uh, and this is going to get a little confusing while I rewire this. So inside of the repeat zone, we are going to have 
this guy connect into the repeat zone, this guy connect into our extrude, uh, this guy into the output, this guy into the geometry node. So what you're going to see is this little area right here is repeating. So you're going to have, uh, you have, uh, oops, I went into the wrong section here. So there, iterations stays there. So this is the number of times it's going to run. So here we've got, this is going to run three times. We're going to have a triple extrusion on our mesh now. So let's go here and run it. So my tool and boom, off we went. Pretty cool stuff. On top of that, there is a lot more to this tool. So for example, uh, if we wanted to do an input, so we wanted to have these iterations instead run by the user, we could drop that into here, like so. We'll, we'll go here and undo our process. Again, run our tool over here. And you'll see now we've got the actual option of changing the number of iterations we've got going on. Another thing that we could also do is come in here, shift A and search for selection like so. So we're just going to read it to the currently selected faces. So over here, drop that into selection over there on the extruded mesh. And then one final time we run our tool like so there it runs. So let's switch over to face mode, pick a single face. And then now we will run our tool again and it'll run just on our individual selection. This is going to open up the world to a gigantic number of people being able to create tools that before you would have to use C++ or Python to create. Super powerful stuff. And the cool thing here is you can also go ahead and share these out. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come right here. I'm going to say here, and I'm going to mark this as an asset. And we'll, uh, we'll reuse this window over here for this one. So I'm going to go here and go over to my asset viewer, asset browser like so. And then you're going to find we have an unassigned asset right here. Switch this over to current file. Let's go here and call this um, my tool, my tools. All right, there we go. We'll go to unassigned. We'll drop that into my tools. And you could just put this into an asset library. You could share it out to other people. They could add it to their own asset libraries. And what you're going to notice here is in edit mode. Now my tools shows up. So you could actually create multiple different tools, all be added to your edit mode and then boom in and off you go. Geometry node tools are going to be a game changer for the number of uh, extensions and add-ons that are created for uh, blender. If you want to get an idea of the sheer power of these tools, go on to Twitter and check out Passive Star. He's been playing around with them for ages, making a variety of little videos showing what you can do with geometry node tools, quick and dirty selection. And it's some pretty amazing stuff that he's created. And you've got uh, just an absolute amount of control. Again, you're getting an idea from some of the things that he's done here. He's been just playing around with these things forever and making some just hearing an, an idea of the cross section of tools that he has created using geometry node tools. Uh, the sky's the limit on what kind of stuff you can do with these things. The, the geometry nodes and now geometry node tools are definitely a game changer. It's moving uh, Blender's functionality much closer to Houdini in scope and capability, and it's really impressive. Next up, we have a new color management system or tone mapping. Right now, uh, you're probably familiar with Filmic. So here is standard color mapping. Over here, we're going to switch over to Filmic. And this is what Filmic looks like currently. And then we also have the option now of AGX. And AGX, they're basically wording this as Filmic 2.0. It's supposed to give a more accurate representation of like the blooming effect on lights and so on. Uh, I can probably show you best by showing you the release notes. And here we got side by side comparisons of how they work, particularly bright colors will go more towards white, similar to a real camera. So you can see this is filmic. This is AGX. So again, filmic AGX, you really see it here. See how you got more of a white color there as opposed to this yellow bloom out. And then here in here, we've also got another set of them here. So this is filmic AGX, filmic AGX, filmic AGX and so on. So the other options are still going to exist, but you're going to see, see the blooming around the, the neon light in the background. It's going to make a huge difference for those kind of effects. Uh, so yeah, that is the new AGX lighting system. But while we've got the scene open, I can demonstrate another new cool feature is we've got a uh, real time viewport compositing. This has been going on for a while. There's more functionality in here now. Uh, so let me just bring up a window down here. Let's go here into uh, compositing. So compositor right there. Uh, use nodes. So basically you could do things now in real time. So if I wanted to, for example, I could do uh, a brightness contrast node. Drop that in the middle there and then you can control the brightness. So you can do this on your renders, but also you can do it on view on real time now, which is actually pretty cool. So we got a bunch of new ones here. For example, we've got uh, rays. Uh, 
rays, if I spell it right, or light, oh, beams. Sunbeams are now available there, but the coolest new one here is this Kuahara, I think I'll call that. And what this allows you to do is add a painterly effect to your image. And this one works in the real-time composite. And you can see the effect immediately. That is pretty cool. You can actually dial it down so there are no effect at all. And then here we can add it in. So if you're looking for more of a drawn effect, uh, you can do this and you can do it obviously you can see in the real-time compositor as well. So we got this new uh, Kuahara node in here. There's a couple of other nodes that they've added as well, but I think this one is the coolest one. On top of that, there's also advanced options here. So you can do Anistronic. Uh, so change the uniformity of it, change the size of it. Like so, and you're kind of getting a different effect. Also, you can increase the sharpness or decrease the sharpness. So if you're really looking for like a pastel or watercolor effect, you could just jack this up to a really high amount or you can, you know, drop it down quite a bit and get a completely different result. But that is pretty cool. And the fact that this actually works in the real-time compositor as well is pretty sweet. And on the topic of nodes, if you head on over to the shader editor, what you'll notice is there has been a massive redesign on the principal BSDF shader here. Uh, you're gonna notice now everything collapses down like so. Uh, we've also got some new uh, options here. Coat was moved up here and Sheen has new options in here as well. Uh, some people are not going to like this collapsing user interface. Some people are. I'm going to be polarizing again, I think. Let me know what you think of that down below. Also, you're going to notice the modifiers also got a rework in how it's organized. I'm not sure I like this one, to be honest, but the collapsing aspect of this, I do appreciate. And heading back to the release notes here, you're going to see the principal BSDF did get a complete revamp. So Sheen uses a new microfiber shading model, shading model uh, and is the top layer above emission and coat. Traditionally, Sheen has been used to make for fuzzy cloth that can now be used for dust on arbitrary materials. Coat was a plate was placed above the emission layer. This can be used to simulate, for example, an emissive phone screen behind glass. Coat tint and IOR inputs were added, so it can be used for more than a white clear coat, uh, and so on. So you can see some of the various different uh, options available with the new BSDF. BSDF features. Also, the glossy and anastrophic uh, BSDF were merged into glossy BSDF going forward. Uh, so I'm not sure if people are going to like the new UI on the uh, BSDF nodes. Let me know that in the comments down below. But ladies and gentlemen, that is some of the marquee features in Blender 4. There was actually a bunch of tools uh, added for animation, etc. Uh, but I, those are the ones I chose to cover today. Let me know what you think of Blender 4. Are you going to be downloading it? Uh, what do you think? What's your favorite new feature? Let me know comments down below. I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.